You triggered my trap card! We all know the you've activated my trap meme, but I started to think about it a bit more. At the core, it's about outplaying your opponent and reading their next move. So what if we could do this all the time? Would we even need monsters to beat our opponents, or could we simply flip our opponent's strategies against themselves? Can you beat Yu-Gi-Oh without monster cards? The only rule for this run is I can't put monsters in my deck. We can take control of them or whatever, but we can't directly bring monsters to a duel. I'm going to run this on Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution, but the particular game doesn't matter much. I chose this one since it had a lot of newer cards and mechanics than a large array of deck archetypes. It also doesn't start us with access to most cards, so we'd need to struggle to get better ones. Let's answer the question and get started. But how do we get started? We are given enough spell and trap cards to create a deck of 40, but the selection is terrible. It's probably not going to be winning us anything as we really have little to no option of taking our opponents out. So what's the strategy to win then? Well, give up. No really. See, if you lose or surrender a duel, you still get rewards. In Legacy of the Duelist, the cards we get from losing or winning always come from the opponent's deck, and they continue to drop these until we have three copies of every card in their deck. We start with access to one duelist in each campaign, giving us a lot of extra spells and traps that we don't start with. In particular, the Sledgehammer deck gives us some new token stuff that's extremely useful and makes the starting bit possible. If you've played other Yu-Gi-Oh games, you might think we could buy from a card shop, but in Legacy of the Duelist, we need to unlock the packs first. So, after about 5 hours of surrendering over and over to get cards, I was finally able to build a deck. Just a quick note about my roll set. I also decided to abide by standard rules and disallow banned cards and use the limits on limited cards, though I tried to avoid the limited if possible. So, let's assemble the first deck. I won't go over every card in each deck, but I will link the built decks in the description below. Since we're severely limited, the best strategy we can get this early on is to use tokens and try to put equip cards on them to power them up. In particular, the first Monarch, which is from Sledgehammer, allows us to get out a token that has quite high defense so we can stall until we get equip cards. There are a few other notable cards for the starting deck, which are Shard of Greed, Reckless Rush, Dark Hole, Fiend Sanctuary, Magic Cylinder, Bearer Force, and Backup Squad. On to the first duel. Joey is definitely the easiest to tackle. You're a third-rate duelist with a fourth-rate deck. He got out a single tribute summon quite quick, but with Fiend Sanctuary we could summon a token that's basically a magic cylinder. What's even better is that the opponent almost always attacks it. I laid Rush recklessly down, which might seem strange for the token that can't attack, but I had a different goal in mind. Since it's a quick play, I can activate it after he declares an attack, making the reflected damage from Fiend's token even higher if we equip it to his card instead. Additionally, since our token is lost, Backup Squad gets triggered to help us cycle our deck faster. Another interesting combo I came up with this early was Statue of the Wicked. If it's destroyed while face down, we could summon a token, and by triggering Mystical Space Typhoon to destroy our own card, we could do just that. Dealing damage did let Joey quick summon from his hand, but that was okay since I had Magic Cylinder down, and him summoning more raises my token higher due to Fighting Spirit. He left a monster in attack, expecting me to lose my token, and that set me up for an easy win. Unfortunately though, this doesn't unlock a card pack, so we still need to beat one more duelist. The original series is still the easiest, which puts Kaiba up next. He's definitely tougher than Joey, being able to get out blue eyes, which we can't out damage as easily. One little interesting combo I found in this duel was to equip Black Pendants to the opponent's strongest monster, then Magic Cylinder it for extra damage. Afterwards, we could destroy it with something like Black Hole or Mirror Force to get the bonus damage for Black Pendant going to the graveyard. This one was tough, and I had a few losses, but on attempt 5, I wound up getting a Mirror Force off early in the match, then getting my Monarch token on the field. With some Black Pendants, I had enough attack that a standard summons couldn't take me out. He had been using Shadow Spell to bind my buff tokens, but I managed to get a Raijiki Break off to destroy it before he could activate it in this attempt. And just like our trick of dealing Black Pendant damage via destroying his monsters, I finished off his last few life points by using Dark Hole on my own Monarch to trigger both Black Pendant graveyard effects. And with Kaiba down, the card shop is unlocked, even if it's only a single pack. But since I spent so much time surrendering at the beginning, I had a bunch of dominoes so I could buy a lot of new cards, letting me build up a new deck. Notably, I had access to some burn cards now like Tremendous Fire and Ukazi, as well as Brain Control. 
So progressing from here is a bit more free, but I started with the inverse duels of what I've already beat. For the inverse Yugi and Kaiba duel, another new card, Memory of an Adversary, gave me a neat option for winning. Basically, when attacked, I'll take full damage, but it banishes that monster, and during my opponent's next end phase, I get it on my side of the field. Stealing Yugi's Dark Magician this way made draining his life points quite easy. Weevil was Duel 3, one Storm Monarch token, Magic Cylinder, and the enemy controller on his Big Moth later, and we bake yet another card pack. Maya's up after Weevil, and between Harpy's Hunting Ground and her general ability to destroy my spells and traps, I decided to switch gears. So, heading over to 5Ds now, let's tackle the first duel against Tetsu. With the new options for Burn and grabbing his monsters, I took him out of my first attempt, unlocking his booster pack. Now to Zexel and then to the Reginald fight. This one did take a few reattempts since he has XYZ cards and has a few things that can destroy spells. That said, his monsters being strong are both a blessing and a curse for him versus us. I was able to get Memory of an Adversary off to grab his Leviathan Dragon, then get a first Monarch on the field as well. After that, he didn't have enough cards in his hand to defend and his deck just wound up getting washed away. Reginald also unlocks a pack for us, namely the Kathy Catherine pack. And swapping gears once again to Arc V now, the Sledgehammer is up. I didn't have the greatest of hands to start, but Swords of Light let me draw a few more, especially comboed with Shard of Greed. Statue of the Wicked is a bit finicky of a card, but Rajiki Break doubled as an agent to trigger it, letting me get something on the field before Swords was up, though it probably got destroyed by his trap. I wound up locking him down with First Monarch, since his side of the field, despite having a lot of monsters, couldn't take out the bulky 2400 defense. After a bit of stalling, I decided to break his mausoleum and then bait him into attacking by turning my Monarch to attack. Mirror Force dealt with his side swiftly, and Fissure his next summon. While not being able to power up my tokens, I had Rush Recklessly and Magic Cylinder ready if he summoned, and that knocked him down to zero, baking the Gong Strong pack. Over in v Reigns, Mr. Hanoi is up, and as you guessed it, he's got a card pack too. The first attempt actually didn't go that bad, and I got off memory of an adversary to still a powerful card, but I got forced into defense position by his spell Pulse Mines. I managed to save it by triggering no entry in his battle phase to force his monsters into defense, but then he pulled out a Cracking Dragon who even though I had more attack power with Rush Recklessly didn't get destroyed from losing a battle exchange. I went straight back in though and had much better luck the second time getting Storm Monarch out right after the start in memory of an adversary to steal his Cracking Dragon, which he did take out right away, but my token was still able to get damage in. Once again I took the win with a Rush Recklessly and Magic Cylinder combo. Honestly, this combo is super fun and feels amazing to get off. And really, this kind of summarizes the strategy for this early deck. Get tokens or steal the opponent's monsters, then protect them with traps that wipe the opponent's field or reflect their attacks back. It worked quite well too, getting me through a few more duels and 5Ds to unlock the pack from beating the takeback scenario with Mr. Armstrong. After spam opening packs that were unlocked, I built another deck which made things much easier. Most notably, the strategy shifted to burn and reflect exclusively instead of relying on tokens or stolen monsters. Cards like Just Desserts and Secret Flash punish my opponents more for doing better, and Swords keeps them locked down while I chip away their health. Defense Draw is also notable as I can prevent an attack and gather burn cards faster. With the new deck and strategy, I charged back into the My Fight that had me stuck beforehand, and this is actually where I learned an interesting interaction. The AI in this game generally does not like to attack you if you have backup squad active. In fact, they'll avoid it so much that they'll only attack if they can finish you in the same turn that it's active so they prevent you from using any drawn cards. This comboed with her generally filling up her field a lot meant that the burn cards like Secret Blast dealt large chunks of damage and made this fight a lot easier. Dark Room of Nightmare was another one I brought in for this deck that might seem kinda bad at first only banking 300 damage per burn card. But when you consider how many burn cards we're playing and that we can stack these, they add up quickly. Blazing Mirror Force is one more I wanted to point out, as when you have an opponent with a lot of monsters, it's a great way to flip the script on them, destroying their field and dealing half of the total attack power as life point to both of you. This may not seem like the most optimal deck, but it actually carried me through the rest of the base Yu-Gi-Oh campaign until I unlocked all the card packs from it. The other campaigns proved a bit more challenging for it though, with the Yuya vs Dipper scenario causing me a lot of losses. Between Mystical Space Typhoon and his XY's returning cards to my hand, and being able to summon quickly I couldn't cut through his deck fast enough. 
That said, you can get a lot of burn damage in with backup squad active, and with good enough luck, Secret Blast will put him in the grave. Kid Blade also gave me a run for my money. Kid Blade's Synchro could destroy multiple spells and traps at a time, and he's got Saber Reflection, which is basically Magic Cylinder for our burn cards, and it's a quick play so we can play it from his hand. The real key to this duel was to lock him down with swords and then take advantage of Balance of Judgment. Basically, this card lets us draw a bunch if the enemy has more cards on the field than we have altogether. And with him liking to stack cards on the field, the burn from Secret Blast is also particularly good, knocking up to 2,000 at a time. With all these newfound strats, I started picking off the first few duels across the various campaigns, trying to unlock as many boosters as possible. With this deck, I was able to unlock all of these boosters, which gives access to a lot of new cards. For deck 3, I mostly loaded up more Magic Cylinders and put in Dimension Wall, which is very similar to Magic Cylinder. And honestly, this was the last change I made to my decks. I expected unlocking the other boosters would be needed, since a V-Rain scenario seemed like it'd be a big barrier to pass, but I only had trouble with a handful of duels with this final deck. You need to fight Blue Angel multiple times, and her deck was particularly frustrating. Basically, her cards can lock down a spell zone, then destroy the card in it, inflict damage for activating a magic trap, or just cycle monsters quite fast. The key to winning duels like this is to know how the AI chooses which spell to destroy your lock down. They choose the leftmost card. Yeah, that's really hard logic, I know, but seldomly they'll choose the rightmost card instead. With that knowledge, put stuff like swords or your non-burn cards in your outer slots in case she locks one down, then try to keep her locked down. Oh, and one major boon is that Just Desserts counts Pendulum Monsters too, so you can deal a lot of damage with it against her. Soul Burner also proved fairly difficult. He can pull off an insane amount of Leak Summons each turn, and every Heat Leo Summon he does removes a spell or trap, putting it back in your deck. I'm an old school player and not even going to claim to know how linking works, but I will claim to know how to beat this one. Get lucky with your draws after he summons. If you lock him down with swords and build up a few cards after he gets the heat leos out, then you can build up enough cylinders or dimension walls and burn cards to knock his life points down. Dennis McField is another story though. This dude was easily the hardest duelist to fight without monsters, and he's in multiple scenarios. See, Performage, his archetype, has loads of effects dedicated to ruining spell and trap strategies. Even worse, his XYZ Trapeze Magician has an effect that just negates any damage that isn't equal to or more than its attack power, meaning almost all our burn cards are negated. I'm certain that there's a more optimal deck for this, but I was too lazy to build one for a single duel list. Using all the knowledge we've gotten so far, the strat I came up with was trying to draw Blazing Mirror Force. Keep it in the center of your zone so it's safe from being moved off the field, and resist using any burn cards until you deal with the Trapeze Magicians. When destroyed, the Trapeze cards lets him summon more monsters, so if you've stacked burn cards, you can immediately punish him for doing so. And that was just enough damage for me to finish him off. You'd think that the finales of each campaign would be our most difficult, but even AI's a finale of V-Rain I beat on my first attempt. I did, in fact, do every duel and inverse duel with these decks and completed a 100% campaign despite how long it took. Making the answer to our original question, yes. You can, in fact, beat Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution without any monster cards. Honestly, I was expecting this one to be a bit harder than it was, and I didn't talk about the majority of duels because they wound up being easily won on my first try. Good old Magic Cylinder and Burn cards were just too effective versus AI Duelist, even when they had more recent decks. That said, it was certainly still quite a fun run, and if you're interested in doing it, I'd say maybe just don't 100% the campaign, as it really did take a significant amount of time. For now, I'm gonna add some monsters back into my deck and start planning the next run. If you want to see more challenge runs, you can check out some of my other content, or drop a follow to see the upcoming stuff. I'm Glitch the Box Links, and I'll see you in the next Out of the Box Challenge.